Brendan Richard. Let's do. I was asking, Brendan, what do leaders actually do? You know, maybe maybe you're leading a team, or you're in charge of a large organization, or you're just trying to even lead your own life. I mean, what what is it that leaders actually do? Many of you know this was my graduate school work in, in 2001. I wrote a book called The Student Leadership Guide, and I never had any clue that thing would blow up the way that it has. And this framework for leadership, it's called E6, is from that book, and it's been used at I think 40 of the top 100 schools in the world, uh, major. Corporations from around the world, major associations have called me in to speak on this topic because it's a great framework for leadership. It's it answers that question: What are the major practices of leadership that we must enact on a continual basis to be able to have the amount of influence and impact we desire in in our work lives or in any role in which we're leading other people? So let's get right into it. The, the first E of these six E's is envision. Great leaders envision a compelling and different and vibrant future than what is here. They have an alternative, clear view of what the world could be like tomorrow than it is today, right? They have a shared purpose. They believe that they and others would be compelled by, interested, inspired by, and want to work towards. And that's a big deal. And you always read about it in leadership, right? You have to have vision. I mean, it's biblical. Where there is no vision, people perish. Right? We we know the power of having that vision. So you have to sit down though and actually do it. The reason we say envision versus just have a vision is you have to sit. It's a it's a practice of envisioning. What should tomorrow look like for my team? What should tomorrow be like for my business, for my organization? What should tomorrow be like for my life? And not just tomorrow, a long term mindset and view, the the dream. Right, that magnificent obsession, that that bold desire, the moonshot goals and purposes and missions of life, the bigger picture. That's envisioning a different reality in the future than we experience today, and that's what everybody gets excited about in leadership. Where there's no vision, there's no leadership. Where there's no vision, people perish. So you have to envision. And I say that these are six practices of leadership and not six steps, because it's not like you do envisioning once and then you move on in the process. We always have to continually sit down and envision where are we, where can we be going. It's an active process. If you set a vision one time and and you forget about it, it's not going to help you accomplish the influence or the impact you want in your lifetime or in those that you lead. The second E here is enlist. As you're developing this vision, it's not just your vision. You're enlisting other people to share their voices, their perspectives, their dreams, their desires. For where you could be going, you know, I think that the most important leadership lesson in the world is that people support what they create. If people are involved in the ideation of a vision, they're involved in creating ideas, of brainstorming, of figuring out what is it we are about, what do we stand for, where are we going. Great leaders enlist that from other people. They're they're constantly asking people what they think, how they feel, what think, what think, things they desire and need. And it's that enlistment that is always going on. A great leader is always enlisting other people to 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 believe in the dream, to shape the dream, to stay dedicated to the dream. It's an honest and a, an authentic and a genuine desire to see other people be involved in the process and to enjoy that process. I mean, it, it's so vital. And that methodology of have, what you know, how do you get people involved in it? You're asking questions. You're paying attention to their needs. You're reflecting back to things that you're hearing. You're always enlisting others to support and to build this vision, this ideal future, together. The third thing that great leaders are always doing is embodying their message. They stand for something. There's a congruence between who they are, the behaviors that they're enacting into the world, how they treat people, what they're working towards, and what they say is important. Right? That that's it's just basic line. It's, it's integrity. You know, it's a congruence believe between what we say we're after and how we are behaving. There's nothing more important, is there? You know, it, it's like it's that old message. It's like you don't believe the message unless you believe the messenger. So as leaders, we have to stand for and demonstrate and show and portray what we are really believing in. I mean, are we really? Are there, is our team and the people around us seeing us work for it, sweat for it, sacrifice for it, champion it over and over and over again, 
even when it's hard, even when there's conflict, even when people are pissed, even when people want to quit, are you still there? Do you still stand for it? If you do, you become a legend. Third, I'm fourth, what we have to move on to is now empowering people. Empowerment means we give people the decision-making authority and the trust to be able to work towards this vision, to allow them the autonomy, the strength, the input, to, to equip them with the knowledge, the skills, the abilities, the technologies, the tools, the training, to allow them to succeed as they march with us to achieving something extraordinary and phenomenal. That's vital. That's what empowerment is about. And a lot of leaders who come in with a big vision, they get everyone excited, you know, they, they, they seem like they, they want everybody involved and they do a great job of standing for it, but they don't equip their teams to kick some butt. They never get to that place of real stride, of, of, of real momentum. And that happens all the time. Training other people and equipping them with everything they need to succeed has to be a vital practice of every great leader. And again, it doesn't happen just once. That's a huge failure in the working world, especially in corporate America. Great leaders come in, they nail the vision, they get people around it, they stand for something. But they only empower people at the beginning. They give some training and then they just disappear. Training has to be consistent, coaching has to be consistent, equipping people to deal with the new challenges, the new tools, new technologies, the new competitive realities. That's vital. We have to have that in place, right? So we've got, we've been doing this practice. We envision a better future. We enlist other people to help shape that vision, to believe in that vision, to support that vision. We stand for something by embodying our own message. We empower other people to be able to support and to be able to win then we have to evaluate. It's one of the hardest things that we do in all of leadership, to evaluate the key people who are with us, their contributions, evaluate their skills, evaluate their needs, and to evaluate the ethics that are going on in our organization, in our team. Are we being, are we being excellent and are we being ethical is the questions that we're evaluating on, right? Are we being excellent and ethical as we are progressing, which I guess would be the third question. Are we progressing? If not, why? Are we being ethical? If not, why? If our people are not being excellent, if not, why? These are the questions that we have to ask as this practice. And evaluation, it's like every day as a leader. You know, you've got to keep your thumb on the pulse to see, hey, how are we doing? Are we alive? Are we moving forward? That evaluation also brings up the incredible challenge that we face as leaders, which is to give honest direct, immediate, constructive feedback to those people who are trying to influence and lead, you know, to our collaborators, to our friends, to our followers, whatever word that you use for them. I mean, it's vital. It's vital that we are paying attention and seeing when things are going off the rails, you know, that we never check out. I mean, it's a consistent process of checking in and seeing how we're doing and paying attention to really evaluating the progress of our mission. And that final thing, that sixth thing, that thing that makes the magic, encourage. You know, to encourage, to be the champion, to be the cheerleader, to be the person always motivating, inspiring, uplifting people. To, to never just have, you know, a lot of leaders, they, they get their pet projects and they get excited about it and they disappear. No, man, you need to encourage on a continual basis. You need to light people up. You need to have it in your heart and in your soul, that desire to want to lift people up, you know, to lift them up and lift them off their butts, to get them excited about things, you know? If, if you can't motivate them with, with your passion and your example, then what are we doing? You have to encourage people when this gets hard. You know, when you're working towards a mission, it gets hard. And longer term, the more people involved, the bigger the organization, the bigger the vision, the bigger the dream, the longer the duration to accomplish it, the more struggle, the more challenge, the more conflict, the more discord, the more disappointment, the more frustration, the more doubt, the more delay. All those things happen. Leaders have to deal with them. And the way they have to deal with it is always being that encouraging voice. When the chips are down, when it looks most bleak, you're still that beam of light. And when it gets dark, when it gets challenging, when there's conflict and turmoil and turbulent seas, you're solid. You're somebody that they know they can go to because you're always going to turn a negative into a positive. You're always going to help them see the alternative view, the next step. You're going to champion people. You're going to champion the mission and the cause. 
that's leadership. That's the six E's of leadership. Envision, embody, empower, evaluate, and encourage. And I'll say what overlays all this is a philosophy about what we're doing, that it's important to us, that there's a purpose, there's a mission to it, that we feel that deeply within us is so powerful. And we honor, we respect, and we love those we work with. Last. Okay. For the last six minutes of this podcast, I kind of want to talk to you. I'm going to level with you. Leadership, I think, should be a key of entrepreneurship. Well, I do understand that John C. Maxwell feels that uh, there is a mis- misnomer that entrepreneurship automatically means leadership. I can understand that. But I also firmly believe that a good entrepreneur, in some ways, if, if, they're, if they got a large, wanting to build a large organization and a large vision, they need to be good leaders. Okay? They need to be good leaders. And, and sometimes that involves... Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Here here we go. Here we go. Plain truth. Do hard things. I know you don't want to hear it. I know you don't want to hear it, but it's kind of of an an ongoing theme that is in energetic living. And leaders are called to do the hard things. I'm currently serving as Vice President for Public Relations of my group, Odessa Toastmasters. And I'll tell you something. His six E's that I mentioned, I think some of the things that I believe in is empower, evaluate, envision, empower, evaluate, and encourage. Because people need that. We got so many people that are just wanting, you know, that, that claims that they're leaders, and they just want to lord it over everybody. And if that person doesn't catch a fit, they'll just throw a fit because I'm like getting my own way. Come on, that does not make a real good leader. Okay, I'm speaking the truth. Am I not? Goes along with what I say. Being a leader is not easy. I used to think as a kid that, you know, being a little would be easy, I'd be, be cool, all these people following me and, and listening to me and everything, and here I am, you know, <laughs> over four times that age, and I'm telling you the hard truth. Do hard things. And sometimes that involves emotional authenticity and intelligence, which means that we have to admit that it's okay to not be okay. Sometimes we don't meet the vision and dreams and objectives, but that's when we need to be on top of things and and grow our vision. Okay, so you've heard enough of the hard grind stuff of leadership. Because one of the things that's a blessing also is the flow. You get to flow in leadership. <laughs> you forgive me. I'm I'm a Gen X cat. And we Gen X cats prefer to flow, not grind. Occasionally we do have to grind. And it's hard. And it's tough. But there's the flow part. The part that can be taken care of easily. <sighs> Podcasting. I wasn't going to do this podcast until 8 o'clock tonight. And I don't know what it was. I had just uh, finished eating dinner. Mama was my mama, mama was watching uh, a certain certain program. I, I won't go into it and everything. You know, a lot of people a lot of people like it and everything. They like medical shows and stuff like that. But I felt like it was kind of reactive, and I thought, well, I'll be honest with you. I feel like nowadays, my generation younger. We don't even know what a real leader is anymore in our country. 
you don't know what a real leader is, a real a real stand-up guy.